I have some iPad app recommendations for you all. This video is sponsored by Casetify. Let's get right into it. I wanna start with an app called Ouchie. So I've been struggling really hard with my ADHD again. It kinda comes in waves for me. Sometimes it's a little bit easier, sometimes it's not. And right now it's incredibly hard, especially with the new Zelda game out. The ability to be able to block certain apps while I'm doing certain tasks would be amazing. And this is exactly what Ouchie does. Now, due to system limitations, this does take a bit of setup. First, you have to set up a filter inside the app. Here you can set up websites, categories of apps, and specific iOS and Mac apps you wish to block. For me, the main culprits are social media apps and email. Something that's kind of funny, once I started blocking social media apps, I actually started to deal with my email properly, though I'm still not even close to caught up with it. Now, this is a thing I should absolutely do, but not at the expense of getting my core work, like filming videos and stuff done. So once you have the filter set up in Ouchie, you actually have to go into shortcuts. And this is where it can get a bit cumbersome due to the nature of iOS and iPad OS. So you have to go to the automations tab and set up a new personal automation. You're gonna select the automation app type, and then you want the option of when app is opened. In here, you're gonna go ahead and pick the app that you want this automation to run against. Now you're gonna get a new shortcut and we're gonna add the action app open check from Ouchie. Then you have to select the app you want to block as the variable. Now this is the really cumbersome part. You have to do this for every single app that you want to block in Ouchie, just due to the nature of iOS and iPad OS. There's nothing the developer can do to get around this. It is extremely annoying, but it does go by pretty quickly. Now, once you have this all set up, you can turn on the filter. If you try and open a blocked app, it will automatically close that app. If you open a blocked web page, you'll get a friendly reminder that you should be doing something else. In Ouchie, you can set up schedules if you have some kind of routine to do your work. Personally, I'm a mess. I work whenever I can and I don't have much of a routine. So the ability to have a schedule doesn't really do anything for me. When I start it, I just start an unlimited time block. I use Ouchie's excellent shortcut actions to automate the enabling and disabling of my filter. So inside my shortcut mode cut, this is a shortcut I use for putting my devices in the proper state for doing specific tasks like writing or filming or editing or admin stuff, so on. For example, I'm gonna use the writing mode section of this one. When I run mode cut and select writing, it enables my no social filter in Ouchie. This stays on until I run my reset focus shortcut. This app has been seriously helping me with my focus and ADHD lately. I extremely appreciate it. So this next app I'm going to pronounce completely wrong and I just apologize up front to anyone that speaks Turkish uh, but I believe it's called Durfter Notes. Uh, Durfter stands for notebook in Turkish I believe uh, and it's a really interesting and aesthetically pleasing whiteboard app. It's built around the idea of dragging and dropping objects to organize things. So you start with this main view. Here you can add pages, sticky notes, PDFs and more. And from there, you can create spaces in this main view. Basically, these are folders to organize your notes and ideas. At the top, it'll show you your spaces and you can navigate between all of them. This app really benefits from having the Apple Pencil. You have all the typical tools like pen, pencil, marker, eraser, and object select that you can use in the app. You can drag and drop images and embed them. You can also use their embed PDF tool and add a PDF to the canvas. Here you can actually browse through all the pages. I also really like their color picker. They have some preset colors that look really good and match the theme of the app. But if you want something specific, you can tap on them and use the system color picker to change them. Because this is an infinite canvas app, it is easy to get lost. There is a map tool that you can enable that shows you where everything is and you can move quickly to specific spots. 
I love playing with these kinds of like whiteboard infinite canvas apps, but they don't really fit for the kind of work that I do, which is a huge bummer because again, I really like them and I like playing with them. Uh, and my brain, my brain works best with like simple outline stuff. So just bullet points, but I know these are really popular apps. So that's why I keep covering them. Surfed is an app that gives you uh, advanced web history. In Safari, you can enable the Surfed extension and it will capture all of your web history. This way you can go back and filter and search through anything in your browsing history. In the Surfed app, there's a privacy setting so it won't retain anything you browse in a private tab if you wanna keep things separate. The reason why I like this is because I have a terrible habit of closing tabs, especially when I have a lot open and I have a keyboard attached, I'll just sit there and just spam command W and just close all the tabs without even looking to see uh, what's open. It's, it's a terrible habit. Now, normally I save articles, links, videos, whatever to my read it later app, but sometimes I can get lazy or just forget. I treat surfed as a backup for my browsing history. In fact, the other day I knew I had a tab open for some keyboard switches I wanted to order, but I couldn't find the tab to save my life, probably because I closed it already. So I just opened up Surfed, searched for the name of the keyboard switches, and boom, popped right up. In Surfed, you can set up smart collections for stuff from certain websites. There's even a built-in gallery, so you don't have to build common ones like Amazon or YouTube. This is a great way to automate bookmarking. There's also a tabs and statistics section in Surfed. I don't really use either of these. It's great that it has tags, especially if you're somebody that wants to organize everything really specifically, but it, it starts to feel like this productivity trap that I see a lot of people fall down, where they spend more time organizing and getting you know, apps and stuff to look exactly the way they want to than they do actually using them or working. And that's just like this really common trap I see a lot of people going down now. So for me, I just rely on the search in Surfed. If you ever found yourself looking for a link you know you had open or just wishing Safari had fast history search, Surfed is for you. This video is sponsored by Casetify. Casetify is all about design and giving you cases that aren't just protective, but look good. Casetify may be known for their phone cases, but they actually offer much more. I have two cases here, one for my iPad and one for my MacBook Pro. These have 360 degree all around protection for your device, screen, and overall health. They have eco shock corners so that if your device is dropped, they will observe the shock, not your device's screen. The bottom of the MacBook case has this anti-slip grip so you get extra stability. The iPad case has a stand built into it so you can have a horizontal stand that is great for watching video. Casetify provides 360 degree protection through the case and screen protector. The MacBook screen protector attaches magnetically. It also filters out blue light and has privacy protection. So if somebody's looking over your shoulder to see what you're doing, they can't. The iPad screen protector is very durable and thin to ensure a sleek and slim design. I'm gonna put a link in the description below so you can go check all this stuff out, or you can just go to casetify.com forward slash Christopher Lawley, where you will get 15% discount automatically applied at checkout. My thanks to Casetify for sponsoring this video. Snippety is a text snippet app. I made a shortcut that does something like this uh, a while ago, but Snippety, because it's a full-fledged app, it can just do so much more. I use text snippets for storing things like URLs I need often, addresses, both physical and email, and text I type often. And having all of this in one place saves me a ton of time. In Snippety, you could add any text snippet you want to it. When creating a snippet, you can add tags and descriptions. When creating the actual snippet itself, you can add variables and placeholder data. So for example, if you have a snippet that requires today's date, you can use the calculated date option. You can also modify this so it uses other dates as well, whether it's like plus or minus a certain amount of days. This feature goes much, much deeper than just adding the date. You can build custom variables, do text transformation, and automatically insert your clipboard content. 
What makes Snippety even better than my shortcut is the software keyboard. With this, you can quickly pull a snippet out and insert it to wherever you are typing. This makes pull using these text snippets so much faster and it'll save you a ton of time. The next app is technically an iPhone app and that is the new OpenAI ChatGPT app. Now, the benefit of having Stage Manager means iPhone apps can run in your multitasking window alongside other iPad apps. It doesn't just take up the full iPad screen, but give you like this little box of the iPhone app anymore. Now, I wanted to cover this app because I have seen so many scammy apps that are charging a small fortune for chat GPT in app form, but all they're doing is calling the API. It's not doing anything really that specific. Now, this official app works with both a paid and free account. So I'm currently just using a free account and it works just fine for me. Over the summer, I'm actually gonna work on a video about how I'm using AI in my work. Um, the TLDR or the TLDW uh, would be it's my assistant. It's extremely handy to use as a sounding board for flushing out ideas, especially considering I work by myself. I don't have anyone on staff or anyone here in the office to talk to you about ideas. So I use AI, however sad that may sound, to kind of help me flush out ideas. Now, there isn't anything too special about the ChatGPT app. It's really just the web view wrapped in an app form. And this is very much a version 1.0 but it works. I do hope for a proper iPad app in the future and shortcut support. That would be killer. But in the meantime, this should help clear out some of those scammy apps. Lear is my new RSS reader of choice. I love RSS as a way to curate news and blogs I care about. Lear hooks right into Feedbin, the backend I use for RSS and newsletters. But if you want, you can also use iCloud for a sync service if you just wanna go for a more straightforward approach with no extra third-party stuff. What I like about Lear is it incorporates the best stuff from my other two favorite RSS apps, NetNewsWire and Reader. With Lear, you get a great design and system-wide gestures when in tablet mode. I love the ability to swipe left and right because sometimes when you get a long article in RSS that you aren't interested in, other apps force you to swipe all the way to the bottom to get to the new article. And in Lear, you can just swipe to the right. In laptop or desktop mode, there's excellent keyboard shortcuts for navigating through articles. The other feature that Lear has that has become a must have for me is Bionic Reader. I've talked about this a bunch in the past. Uh, basically, the short of it is, is it's a system that helps you comprehend reading. So if you're somebody that finds yourself like reading something and then you have to like go back and reread it like a couple of times, Bionic Reader is for you. It may look a bit strange at first, I, I will totally grant that, but it has vastly improved my ability to read things quickly. Lear also has support for built-in smart lists like hot links, authors, link lists, and more. Honestly, I ignore all of these and I just stick to the unread tab. Anybox has become my read it later and bookmarking app. The idea behind Anybox is you can save anything to it. It could be documents, images, whatever. But all I wanna save is links and URLs. So I've turned all that other stuff off. I love the design of Anybox. It doesn't try to be anything more than an app you can save stuff to. It has excellent share sheet support for quickly adding links to it. There's also great shortcut support if you wanna build something a bit more custom. In Anybox, I use collections to organize the different stuff I'm saving. I keep apps I wanna check out, articles to read, gear I wanna purchase, and of course, keyboard stuff. Anybox also has support for smart lists. These can filter stuff saved to Anybox via collections, domains, file formats, and the state that it is in the app. But you can also take it even further and write regular expressions so that you can get real specific about the stuff that you want in that list. It's very impressive. The biggest thing I appreciate about Anybox is when you tap on something, it takes you right to that web page in your default browser. If it's a deep link to another app, it'll take you there as well. Too many other bookmarking apps try their hardest to keep you in their app, and I just, I don't want that. I always wanna go back to the original page that stuff is on. Play is a much more focused version of Anybox. This one is focused all around video. 
when I was using it, it's at its best when you're using it for stuff like YouTube, but you can save stuff from any video service like Disney Plus or Netflix or Hulu. When you add something to play, it pulls all the metadata for that video so you can see when it was posted, the duration, you can even add notes to it if you want. In play, you can tag videos so you can organize them into specific category. In play, you can hit the play button to quickly play whatever it is you want to play. Sorry, I couldn't help myself. If you want more control over your watch later queue, Play is the app for that. Very similar to Play, there's an app called Music Box, and it's similar because it's developed by the same person. Music Box is for saving albums, songs, and playlists you wanna listen to later. You can add music from any service that supports the share sheet. You can even add stuff that Shazam recognizes. You can quickly start playing music right from the app as well. Both Music Box and Play are extremely well-built apps that serve a really specific niche. Now, for me personally, they're not something that I would wanna use. I like saving all of that stuff in one place and that's any box for me. But both of these are really well-built apps and I wanted to cover them because I know there are people out there that like separating these things out in different silos. Sticking with the Save for Later theme, the next app is called Sequel. This is a great app for curating a list of movies, TV shows, books, or games you wanna watch or play or interact with. In SQL, you can add stuff you wish to watch or play, and it will pull all the proper metadata. Once you've finished with something, you can move it into a finished category and rate it. If you add something to SQL and it's not out yet, SQL will remind you about it when that piece of media is released. You can also build collections. For example, I've started working on my favorite games of all time list. SQL is great for managing media you want to interact with and also keeping a collection of things you've watched, read, or played. The last app I want to cover is Obsidian. Yes, I have become one of those people. Obsidian is an extremely powerful text editor. The app is wildly customizable between themes, plugins, and tweaks. I've built it exactly the way I wanted. In fact, I tweaked the most popular theme minimal to match my drafts theme Dark Knight. I'm gonna start doing a few Obsidian videos over the summer, starting with a getting started one. Obsidian can be extremely daunting for those just starting off with it. There are a ton of different ways to set up sync, plugins, themes. I truly believe it's one of the most powerful apps ever for writing text. So I'm gonna kind of start to cover it slowly so I don't overwhelm people. That's it for this video. I wanna hear from you all what your favorite iPad app is that you are playing with right now. Let me know in the comments below. My thanks to Casetify for sponsoring this video. If you liked the video, hit the thumbs up button, subscribe if you haven't already. Thank you all so much for watching and have a great day.